Good morning. Uh, we got Frosted Flakes today. What do you got? Oh, you already ate all your waffle? Yeah. What are you eating, Bubba? Frosted Flakes too? Not listening. And ABCs. But anyways, um, 7 a.m. started this morning because the volumes are starting to come back up a little bit, but the brokers are still trying to keep the prices low for a, a better margin. I understand it. But um, there's starting to be a lot more loads, so that's good. Good, good news for us. But um, booked one, or tried to book one from right by the house to Atlanta. And there's been a lot of these lately, but it was, um, I said, hey, can we get 550 on this? And my broker guy came back and he said, uh, 500, we can do it. And by, But I started playing with the kids in the bed and emailed back about 10 minutes later and somebody booked it for 450. So still a lot of guys out here that I guess you have to understand Easter just happened. So that came and brought it down a lot. Plus the pandemic, it gives the brokers a lot of firepower to think of, to get in your mind to think, oh, you got to take something. But hold your ground. I think by about 10 or 11 today, Hopefully something will pop up and I'll uh, get it going. But yeah, God bless. And we are going to uh, get this going, but it's a rainy day out there today. And uh, this little guy keeps staring at me. All right, see what we get. All right, got one, heading out of here. Uh, same C.H. Robinson broker, he's saving my life right now. Got me a thousand bucks up to Richmond. Virginia area, so we'll take it, picks up right here, and I'm gonna have to leave her behind. Fucking wife. Don't be cheating on that Connect Four while I'm going. I don't know where these kids are, but oh, here they are. One of them's sleeping, but these two got M&Ms. Of course they do. All right, we're out of here. Love you too. Get to the truck. And here we are, back in Duncan, South Carolina. Walked down to this boat Jangles about a, I think it was about a month ago. Got some food, but um, yeah, this broker he's been looking out for me lately. My little angel on my shoulder, because uh, I was getting offers. Uh, I'll show you right after this video a clip. Thousand um, dollars to Miami from Gainesville, Georgia, which is outside of Atlanta. Um, and then he was showing. I'll show you one uh, email from him where somebody booked seven hundred and I think eighty miles to New Hampshire for $1,400. This It's getting bad out here. I think the volumes are coming back up, but I think a lot of um, carriers, small carriers like myself, are just kind of panic booking, I'm calling it. Like, I need to get something. They, they, um, they can't sit there and wait. They just feel like they gotta get something on the truck, but 800 miles, you're, you're gonna make after fuel and two day trip, maybe six, 700 bucks, 800 bucks. Uh, I don't know, it's not, toll roads up there in New Hampshire, just not really worth it, so. This uh, panic book and don't do it. Hold, uh, I wouldn't say hold your guns, but just make it make sense for your truck to make the money after fuel that's going to be relevant to you. Like this load right here is a thousand dollars, three hundred and uh, three, just under three hundred eighty miles, uh, Richmond, Virginia area. There's not a lot coming out of there, but I'm already trying to work a couple loads just to get back down here or maybe take a shot down to Florida. So. Let's check in to Benor. If you live in the south, if you're around Atlanta, South Carolina, Benor, they have the big um, BMW account, so they run a lot of their stuff. But uh, I've been here a couple times, so I'm gonna get checked in, and I'll see you guys soon. Yikes. It's bad enough out here, guys. Come on. Oh, and a Miata. It's like everybody's okay. Just some fenders broken. Jeez. Let's get going. Beautiful Blairs, Virginia. Just crossed the state line about, I don't know, 20 miles ago. And um, never been up Highway 29. It is nice. Uh, it was about 45 minutes quicker to where I'm going because I'm going up between 80 and between 85, 95. I'm going up in the middle right there. And um, <coughs> 29 was an option, so I said, I've never taken that. And it's a highway. I'll go check it out. And it sure is pretty out here. I'm at a little uh, BP. They have a Little Caesars Pizza in there. But if you don't want pizza, which I've never seen before, can always come to these two. And this is awesome. So what do we have here? Uh, Christina. 
Christina? Caleb. Caleb, you guys are doing an awesome thing for us out here. And it's done on, is it Blairs County or Dry Fork? Where are we at? We're in Pennsylvania County. Pennsylvania County? And they, they got to support you guys with it? Put it on? They're funding it? Yeah, like our friends, family, we have a GoFundMe. Oh, okay, they're doing a GoFundMe? Isn't that awesome? So yeah, you can come out here and get some of the good stuff, some sodas. And that is awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing that, guys. I'm gonna grab a banana. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Now that is awesome right there. So yeah, up here in Pennsylvania County, they're doing some free uh, food for you guys. So that's the first I've seen that. And uh, that's awesome to be appreciated right here. God bless, I'm gonna get back on this run. I got about 140 miles left. And it has to be at about 1 a.m. straight through. Later. All right, I'm gonna finish up this video for today before the sun goes down. Uh, still about 80 miles away. I'm liking this 29 too, it's a nice little road. But uh, I can see off the sunset right now to my left, it's beautiful. The sun beating behind the mountains. But that was really cool, those people to have that uh, food out there for us too. I mean, that was real nice. And um, after this, I'll do just kind of the loads that were available today. I shot that screenshot on my phone at about 9 a.m. And it was rough. I mean, a couple loads kept popping up, but um, it wasn't much out there, just like usual. But as for tomorrow, it looks like a lot of these loads from today didn't get put, got pushed to tomorrow. So hope that that brings up uh, the race tomorrow. Um, if you keep holding out, I mean, I wouldn't have had this load without this broker guy of mine. I mean, in the first couple of years for you guys coming out here, new authority, booking your own stuff, um, you're not gonna have much contact because they keep you on their system as a new authority. And they even keep some loads from you that are, are maybe high priority or a uh, high customer um, because they don't want, they don't trust you, they don't know you. So, just food for thought, your first year is gonna be your hardest. Like I'm getting into the end of my second year and it's getting a lot easier. Um, I only got this guy and I got another guy from JB Hunt, but he's, no, that one, it doesn't seem like he has the power of this um, broker. And from those two, that screenshot I showed you earlier, um, that same broker sent me an email saying, because I was just, some of these apps you can hit contact and it'll give you like the assigned uh, broker agent or account manager of um, that brokerage. And it, there's, a, there's a ladder in it. So there's lower and there's higher. And um, I would always just hit that and I would add him to the email. And he said, hey, uh, can I just email me directly because it's causing some problems sometimes because they, they're fighting over the customer, uh, the, the accounts. They're trying to book more loads for those people so they get that account, if that makes sense. So. Um, I just started emailing him directly because he seems to have the most pull for me. He gives me loads like this. He got me last month a load for $1,600 for 140 miles. So I mean, like, uh, it's worth it. But you're not gonna get these brokers. You might get lucky, but like I was assigned a, um, just run of the mill broker agent girl, a uh, nice girl named Samantha, nothing against her, but she didn't have the pull this guy has. She had like always wait for approval, wait for offers. And um, this guy just kind of makes it happen. So that's my, my uh, info on brokers for today um, it will take you a while to get get a, associated with a couple of good ones and it'll probably be in your area this guy's from charleston area real nice guy so shout out to him he knows who he is and then um i guess i'll give you some um info for you new guys coming out with the authority and think about buying a truck i'm going to do a series on that how i bought this truck and what i was looking for but i'll give you a little thing that you might not know about if you're in CD school or you're a new cdl school or you're a new um to kind of truck and are new to trucks I looked for a truck with an APU, because you gotta think about it. An APU is the auxiliary power unit. Um, a lot of guys, uh, guys with real old trucks, they'll put like a generator back there, like a gas fill, when you'll see a gas can behind the guy's cap sometimes with a bobtail, um, because they're running their own little generator. They'll have like a uh, uh, air conditioner plumbed into the back of their truck. But an APU, like, I don't know when they first started coming out, I would say in the 2010 time, 2009, 2010 area, that's when, I, that's when I've seen them on trucks. My truck's in 2013, it has one. But it's about 10 grand to install one, six to 10 grand. And if it comes with it already, then they, they don't really charge too much more for it. Mine had the compressor pad, if you look way back in the videos of, of my feed, um, the compressor, because it's a little three cylinder diesel motor. So it runs off your diesel tanks, but it's only like a 1.3 liter. So it barely build, burns any fuel, you run it all night. But it's better than running your truck all night because if you're just running your truck all night at idle, your hoses are expanding, you're, you're keeping the engine hot, you're wearing your engine out twice as fast, or at least 33% faster than um, just running your APU at night. If it's nice and cold outside, I won't run my truck or my APU. I just keep, save everything as much as I can. But um, 
That's what an APU is, auxiliary power unit. And you're looking on the back of a truck, you'll see a little black box with a fan in it. That's how you know a truck has an APU, because that is for the um, condenser for the air conditioning unit. So that's how you can tell if a truck has an APU or not, or have the little box on the side that says tri-pack, because that is the most common APU is tri-pack, T-R-I-P-A-K, I think it is. Uh, but yeah, food for thought, when you're looking to buy a truck, try and give something with an APU. If you can, if you can swing that price range, it's gonna be about mid 20s to mid 30s is what I would look for for a truck. And so I'll do another series on what kind of motor to look for, but you wanna look for a diesel engine that's easy to work on. So Cummins is what I went with, and Detroit's the other one, but we'll talk about that later. God bless you guys. I'm gonna sign off and get this video loaded and uh, deliver tonight, get some sleep, and see what Richmond, Virginia area holds for me tomorrow. But hey, Highway 29, pretty nice. If you ever got that option to shoot off to Richmond or come up this way, because I'm a little bit past Richmond where I'm delivering. Uh, Highway 29, it's not bad. It's rolling hills and it's uh, easy on truck. So God bless guys, and I'll see you soon.